Hey guys, it's Miss Vinyan, and we're here for Gilded Age Part 1, and the central question for today is the same as before. In what ways, good and bad, is life changing after the Civil War and during the Gilded Age? Learning Target 1.4 um, is the one that we're on for today. All right, so what is the Gilded Age? What is the origin of it? The period, um, it's the period when corruption existed in society, but it was also overshadowed by the wealth of the period. So basically what that means is there's a lot of um, really poor people and there's a couple rich people. And those few rich people um, make it look like America um, is doing really well. There's a lot of abuses in business and government that cause problems for immigrants, laborers, and farmers. And you're going to see an influx of immigrants during this time period. The term Gilded Age comes from a book written about the time period, um, written by Mark Twain and Charles Dudley Warner, and it was called The Gilded Age. Um, so I want you to think, when you think of Gilded Age, I want you to think of uh, a piece of trash dipped in gold. It looks great on the outside, but on the inside, it's rotting and falling apart. Okay, so we're going to talk about the presidents of the Gilded Age. Um, first, we're going to talk about Ulysses S. Grant. Um, and Ulysses S. Grant was um, a very popular war hero. He served for the Union as a general. And um, they always said he was waving the bloody shirt because during the Civil War, he was known as the butcher. Um, he is part of the Republican Party, which was also Lincoln's party, and he wants peace for the country. Um, it was even said that, like, on his tombstone, that it would say, his tombstone would say, let us have peace. Um, he ends up winning the pres presidency thanks to 500,000 votes from freed slaves. Um, the only problem with uh, Grant is that although he was a great general, he wasn't a great president as he lot of, let a lot of corruption in, um, specifically the Tweed Ring, which was a political machine, and the Whiskey Ring, which was a group of his advisors who were um, uh, taking taxes off whiskey to earn money. The next president um, during this time is Rutherford B. Hayes. His nickname is Rutherford. He actually was originally the Ohio governor, which is interesting because Ohio is such a big popular state, and it either votes Republican or Democrat. It goes back and forth. And so uh, they chose, probably chose a candidate from Ohio so that uh, they would vote for Rutherford. Um, he had a very, very corrupt uh, cabinet. Um, and then this was part of what we talked about in the last video. He's the candidate that was the Hayes-Tilden election. Um, the race was so close uh, that they re-campaigned and they did the Com Compromise of 1877, where basically they said, if Hayes takes office, then the North will remove federal troops from the South. And we know what we've already talked about is the North removing troops from the South is going to cause the end of Reconstruction, which is going to have uh, devastating effects on the African-American uh, population. Okay, so the next president is James Garfield. They call him the Shocker. He's also from Ohio, and his running mate was Chester Arthur, another president that we're going to speak about. Um, he was very energetic, and he was really ready to take on the scandal that was going on at the time. Um, it was very scandalous and very corrupt um, within the federal government. Uh, unfortunately, he was assassinated on September 19th. Um, he only survived 11 weeks before dying. And he only served about five months. The importance about James Garfield, and make sure you write this down, is that he shocked politicians into reforming the spoil system. All right, and this is just a um, representation of his, of his assassination. The next president is Chester Arthur. They call him the reformer. Um, Chester Arthur was um, very big in stopping corruption in government. Since James Garfield started it, he ended it. Um, he prosecuted corruption and fraud cases. He pushed through what we call the Pendleton Act, um, and we'll talk about that on the next slide in just a second. And he was such a reformer in his in government that he offended his own party. Like he reformed so much stuff that it offended people um, in his party because he knocked out so many big businesses that um, supported his party, which was the Republican Party. He died um, of a cerebral hemorrhage. Um, this is sort of the, the, some of the corruption that was taking place at the time. The spoil system, which gave government jobs to loyal party workers or friends. Um, people would basically become uh, advisors or de heads of state, um, heads of state departments, if they were just friends with whoever became president. They weren't qualified. They used the uh, position to get money from the government. And James Garfield tried to stop this, but he was assassinated. And so President Chester Arthur... Uh, signed the Pendleton Civil Service Act, which is going to stop this action. And I just want to point out that Andrew Jackson is the one who implemented the spoil system. 
Um, so basically the Pendleton Civil Service Act is a bipartisan commission enacted to make civil service appointments. So basically this means that like you have to pass a job, like you have to pass a test before you can get a government job. It just makes sure people are qualified. The pros are that it cleans up the corruption in Washington. The cons are that it also said that politicians couldn't get their money uh, for f campaigning from federal governments, so they turn to um, corporations, which is not a good thing. Uh, if a corporation is running the uh, is running or supporting the politicians, then they're going to the politicians are going to make decisions based on what the corporations want. Okay, and so. Then we have Grover Cleveland, and we'll wrap up with Grover Cleveland. Um, he was a lawyer. They called him Grover the Good. He served two times. He's the only president that served two uh, non-consecutive terms. That means he served four years, and then he didn't serve, and then later on he served four more years. Um, unfortunately, like he was good, but he was also involved in an affair. He won by a slim margin, and this, not, this affair kind of tainted his uh, reputation. Uh, he was also one of the first time Democrats were in office since the Civil War, because the Democrats, if you'll remember, are mostly made up the South. Um, he was very fair, and he wanted to lower tariffs, and tariffs are taxes on imports or exports, and there was actually a surplus when he was in office. He also threatened monopolies, and uh, unfortunately, because he was so threatening to monopolies, he was not renominated by his own party. Okay, and that's where we're going to end today. Next time, we'll pick up Benjamin Harrison and William McKinley. See you later.